time. Hard times never stay. Hard times never stay. Keep going till you get it. Man, you gotta keep going. Solid plan, put in place. Gotta put a plan in place. Let me tell the world the truth. Let me tell the world the truth. I know we on the way. Gotta know we on the way. Big game for women's basketball at Oklahoma State tonight. You can listen on BYU Radio at 7.30 Eastern time as we welcome you back to BYU Sports Nation. Jerem Jordan, Dave McCann. Tonight, Lauren Gustin goes for the BYU all-time rebounding record, trying to pass Tina Gunn as uh, we bring in Kristen Kozlowski to talk about it. Kristen, this is a record that's uh, stood for a long time, and it could go down tonight. Yeah, I think she has an outstanding chance to hit that record tonight, but I'm Hope, like you, Jerem, I'm kind of hoping it's this Saturday back home in the Marriott Center. I think Lauren, right now, she's averaging 15 and a half rebounds per game in the Big 12, and this is an opportunity for her to break that record that she's worked so hard for. She's just so unique at six foot one and being undersized and still able to go the whole day on those rebounds and lead the nation for the second year in a row. Just remarkable what she's been able to do against bigger, taller opponents that are putting one, two defenders on her to try and box her out. Well, Kristen, Spencer and Jerem and myself and you, we've called a lot of her games over a career. feels like it's been a long career for her. And one of the things we were concerned about and interested about when BYU moved to the Big 12 was would she be able to continue her rebounding pace in a much tougher league against taller, more physical opponents? And she's answered that by leading the country here at this stage of the season. And I think that's what's so phenomenal about this year. Everyone has her at the top of the scouting report. Everyone has her circled in red. When you talk to opposing coaches in conversations leading up to the game, they are most concerned about Lauren Gustin and how do we keep her off the boards because she impacts the game so much with that energy and creating extra possessions on the glass. And so at six foot one, being undersized and continuing to do that for the second year in a row when everybody knows what you're going to do out there, I just think shows to her work ethic, rebounding is so much effort. And she does a really good job of not once, but twice or three times. That second move going and getting that rebound and just doing an excellent job, keeping the ball alive, tipping the ball around or creating extra possessions. She's number one in double doubles in the country, rebounds, defensive rebounds, rebounds uh, per game. She's fifth in offensive rebounds. So I guess there's some work to be done for Lauren Gusson. Yeah, this team's she's coming. Human. <laughs> she is indeed human. We checked. Um, it's good to have her on the squad. She jumped in the portal. She stayed at BYU, perhaps for a night like tonight and games like tonight where BYU coming off its first win on Saturday against Cincinnati. How did they get win number two and continue to try and climb and, and put themselves in an at-large uh, position if they don't win the Big 12 tournament? Well, you know what you're going to get out of Lauren Gustin, but I really think the challenge has been what you're going to get out of everyone else in terms of shots and making shots and shot selection and not hesitating. And this is something that Amber Whiting has harped on with this team because they are going against guards that are flying out with length, guards that are closing out very physical or the on ball, they're jumping the on ball screen, they're trapping, they're just throwing different defenses at them. So it's so important for some of these players that are young, they've got a young backcourt with those two true freshmen to step up and hit shots and be willing to take shots because then it alleviates some of the pressure inside on Gustin, but they definitely have to be able to make shots. And that's really where they've struggled. It's being ball control, taking care of the ball and then knocking down shots when they have those opportunities. One more question before we move to the men and their big win last night. Uh, when a Tina Gunn record is about to be broken, that's a big deal. But a lot of folks might not understand how big of a deal it is. So take a, a moment here and, and educate us on Tina Gunn and the influence she had on this program all those years ago. And you played in this program, so you know it. Uh, and, and for her rebounding record to be uh, on the cusp of being broken tonight, how significant that is. Well, when you have a player that's scored over 2,000 career points, over 1,500 rebounds, she did it with assists, she did it. I mean, this is a, a once-in-a-lifetime type player that's come along, and now you're talking about Lauren Gustin, who's going to be in the mix in those categories. And, and just remarkable what Tina Gunn did to kind of lay the platform for this BYU program and to help continue to build that culture because Tina Gunn comes to a lot of games. I still talk to her, see her at some of the alumni events. Um, she's very special in terms of how she mentors some of these girls when she has those opportunities and really just tries to be positive and supportive. So it goes beyond what she did on the court, but what she's trying to do to create that culture and continue to be a part of the girls' lives, there's an age gap, clearly. I mean, it, it can be difficult at times when 
you don't relate sometimes in terms of age and, and things that they're interested in right now off the court. But I think it's remarkable the example that she set and some of the other players coming through that set for this program. And now you've got these younger players like Lauren Gustin trying to achieve and top your records that you held before. And that's part of the reason that Lauren came back. She can be an all-timer. She was an all-timer, but she's really an all-timer now at the top of the uh, rebounding list here soon. And so let's, let's hope she gets 13 or 14, maybe ties it, and then first rebound, set the record. I think they should stop the game for a moment and just acknowledge, right? Maybe they will. Absolutely. The, like, it's a big deal, especially for her, so that could be fun. Interesting note, by the way, TCU and Iowa State about an hour ago, women's, that game was canceled because uh, TCU has had uh, – or uh, too many injuries um, to yeah. play, so that that's a really unique thing. It's not a it's not a COVID thing. It's not a weather thing. It's a injury thing. We saw that in the BYU men's blue and white game, but uh, interesting. We'll see if they make that game up in the league play. Okay, on the men's side, you talked about the age and experience and not relating. Um, Spencer Johnson is the oldest player in college basketball. He's got so much wisdom, so much craft. And last night we saw his greatest performance. What impressed you the most about what he did? Well, I just think how he stepped up and take you take tough shots. And Johnson is a player that I think he gets it because of the maturity, because of the experience, like you said. He knew he needed to step up. You're missing Trevanel, your sharp shooting three-point shooter. You're also missing Fusini Triori inside, your enforcer in the paint. So he knew going into this game, I gotta carry more of the offensive load. And he did that. He stepped up with confidence, he hit shots, he's moving so well without the basketball. And this does come with that maturity. You understand the game and what the defense is doing, whether they're turning their head, whether they're jumping the pass, going for those back cuts. I just thought he was impressive all around. And, you know, he scored a career high 28 points, but also with those nine rebounds and five assists, I think that's equally as impressive because he's impacting the game in every single area. He only took four shots in the second half. He made all four. But I, he was cruising, ready for 30, may go for 40. But he distributed the ball, kept everybody uh, engaged, and, and did a masterful job. So now this team goes to, to Texas Tech. The Cougars dropped those first two league games. They, they struggle holding second-half leads, and that kind of became a theme. And now they beat UCF, and then they had a dominating performance last night against Iowa State. So they go back out onto the road against Texas Tech. How different of a BYU team is it today compared to even a week ago? I think we've seen a lot of growth uh, in this BYU team, and it shows in their adjustment game by game. We're seeing them adjust to the physicality. That's probably the biggest area where I've seen this BYU team grow is, is they're not backing down when they're getting the pressure. They're adjusting, and they're coming in with a game plan and executing. So last night against the Iowa State team, we knew that they were going to pressure them. They knew coming in that the trap was going to come. They were going to run and jump the screen, the on-ball action. And BYU responded with calmness, and they would – attack or drag that screen and then make a good pass. It was so impressive that they had 21 assists and 11 turnovers against one of the top defensive teams in the nation. And it just shows that the preparation going into it, they're adjusting. They're adjusting the physicality. Every team they played so far in the Big 12, they're stronger, they're physical, and BYU is not back down. And you're missing two players, a short roster, seven players. Super impressive how physical they were and how they matched it. They got to the free throw line. Things like that is showing how they're adjusting to that physicality. I'm not sure of the exact number that uh, TCU has in terms of injury and canceling there, but BYU was down four players last night, right? It was a significantly uh, uh, less bench uh, for BYU, yet the Cougars responded in a tough game they had to play, and it was, uh, it was a great performance. Kristen, we appreciate the time, and uh, best of luck with everything. We know you're busy at all the, uh, all the games you attend. Oh, Always happy to be with you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Chris, and we appreciate it.